We're going to talk about gifts of the Spirit. We're talking about spiritual gifts. Praise God. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now, see, we're talking about spiritual gifts. And he said, I would not have you ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. Now, if Paul didn't want the church there at Corinth to be ignorant concerning these things, I'm convinced that he does not want us today to be ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. And he's going to reveal some things here to us. Let's go on with it. You know that ye were Gentiles carried away of these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. In other words, he's simply saying there that there is no man that speaketh by the Spirit of God that can say that Jesus is accursed. In other words, when the Spirit of God's upon a man, he would not say that. Now notice, he said, no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. In other words, when the Spirit of God is in manifestation then man would not be able to curse or to say anything against Jesus. All right, now he's saying here that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now he's not saying that no man could say it. He is simply revealing to you a fact that no man speaking by any other spirit can say that Jesus is Lord. In other words, if he had some other spirit, now, this is what I want you to see. If you had some other spirit, you could not say that Jesus was Lord when that spirit was in manifestation. In other words, if a man was demon-possessed or possessed of an evil spirit, he could not say when that spirit was in manifestation, he could not say that Jesus was Lord. That doesn't mean that a person that was not saved couldn't say that Jesus was Lord. Certainly, an unbeliever could just say that with his mouth. But he's talking about when a spirit is in manifestation. Now look at verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administration, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now I want you to notice that he says that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. In other words, it's available to every believer today. Now you realize he's talking to believers here. See, this whole thing was written to the church at Corinth. So he is talking to believers, and he said, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh by the one and self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. Now, first of all, I want you to notice that these gifts of the Spirit are divided in three divisions there. There are three gifts that are called the vocal gifts. In other words, three gifts that say something. Or we could say they're inspirational gifts. There are three gifts that say something. There are divers kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. Now, this is the way they're divided. Then there are three gifts that reveal something. In other words, we'd call these the revelation gifts. That is, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. Then there are three gifts that do something, or what could be called the power gifts. And they are the gift of faith, or what we'd call special faith, now, this is not just normal faith that comes from hearing the Word of God. You notice this is spiritual gifts. This is a gift. Now, it says that there is the gift of faith, our special faith, gifts of healings, and working of miracles. Now, these three are considered to be the power gifts. We're going to deal, first of all, with diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy, which is the vocal gift. 
Now, the reason we want to do this is because there's much misunderstanding concerning spiritual gifts. There's some people that say, well, now, Brother Caps, don't you know that all of that passed away with the apostles, and it's not for us today. No, no, you see, he's writing this to the church. This is to the church, and thank God it didn't pass away. I realize that sometimes people have been taught that, and I can see that if you'd been taught that way, you'd believe that way. But I just challenge you to stay with us and see what the Word of God has to say about it. I mean, you know, it's not what some man thinks. It's not what I think that counts. It's what God's Word says about it that really counts. All right, now let's go on down to verse 27 and clear up some of the misunderstanding before we really get into talking about the gifts. Verse 27 says, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, and after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles. Now notice, after he says this, now here's where the misunderstanding comes. People look at this in verse 28 and says he said some in the church, apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, gifts of healings, helps, government, diversities of tongues. Now diversities of tongues here, he is not talking about the spiritual gift of tongues here. He's not talking about that. He is talking about a ministry gift to the church, not just a spiritual gift. This is a ministry gift. You see, prophets, he has set some in the church. See, now rightly divide this. He set some in the church, apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Then he asked the question in verse 29, which really has caused a lot of confusion throughout the church world because they didn't understand it. He said, are all apostles? Well, of course, the answer is no. All are not apostles. Are all prophets? Well, of course, the answer is no. All are not prophets. Are all teachers? Well, of course, the answer is no. All are not teachers. Are all workers of miracles? Well, of course, all of us are not workers of miracles. Have all the gifts of healing? Well, certainly not. Not all have the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues? Well, now you see, there's where people get sidetracked. Do all speak with tongues as a ministry gift, as a ministry gift to the church? No, as a ministry gift to the church, all do not speak with tongues. But yet, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, or what we'd call baptized in the Holy Ghost, then the evidence would be speaking with other tongues. Every believer can speak with tongues. Every believer should speak with tongues. But as a ministry gift to the church, not everyone has the gift, the ministry gift of tongues. Do all interpret? Well, certainly not. All do not interpret, because all do not have the gift of interpretation or the ministry gift of interpreting. Now, Notice, he said, but covet earnestly the best gifts, but yet I show unto you a more excellent way. Now, some have said, now, you see, he's showing us a more excellent way, and we shouldn't speak with tongues and all of that. But no, now, wait a minute. When you go into the 13th chapter, he'll explain that the more excellent way is to operate these ministry gifts in love. That's what he's talking about. That's simply what he's saying. Operate these ministry gifts in love. So you realize that he is talking here about gifts to the church, to operate in the church as a ministry gift, the gift of helps, the gift of working of miracles, gifts of healing, tongues and interpretation for a ministry to the church. All right, we realize then that we have three vocal gifts. Diverse kinds of tongues, which are spiritual gifts. Diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. All right, we're going to deal with those first. So that's what we're going to deal with specifically is the speaking with tongues as a ministry gift. But I did want to point out to you that they are not the same as the evidence of speaking with other tongues. In other words, a person could speak with tongues and not have the ministry gift of tongues to be used publicly. 
Now, this is what he's talking about when he says diversities of tongues. He is talking about a ministry gift. Now, you see, we read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and look at verse 30. It says, have all the gifts of healing? Well, no, all do not have the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues? Well, no, not as a ministry gift. See, now back up to verse 28. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers. In other words, he has set these in the church. And he goes on down and says, diversities of tongues. In other words, different kinds of tongues. Now, on the day of Pentecost, in Acts 2, 4, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. This is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. In other words, it was a supernatural manifestation of the Spirit of God through the spirits of men, and they spoke in a language that they did not understand. But this was not, at that time, was not a ministry gift. This was the initial evidence of the Holy Spirit. In fact, over in chapter 14, verse 2, it says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how being in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. All right, the gift of tongues, or what we call diversities of tongues, is different and separate from the initial evidence of speaking with tongues. Now, this is where people get it all balled up, and they miss the whole point of what Paul is trying to say here. No, you see, all do not speak with the ministry gift of tongues to be given in a public meeting, utterance in the Holy Spirit to be interpreted. That's what the ministry gift of tongues is for. It is to be given in public assembly as the Lord leads and not to disturb the service, though. Now, see, this is where most people miss it. You see, they have seen someone stand up and interrupt a service, interrupt the message being preached, or interrupt something, and give out a message or what we'd call an utterance in tongues. Well, that was a misuse of the gift or someone trying to operate a gift that they didn't have at all. See, Every person can speak with the Holy Spirit. Yes, they can. The Bible says they can. Jesus said they should. In the 16th chapter of Mark, verse 17, Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. One of the signs was, In my name they will speak with new tongues. Well, you see, every believer has the right to do that. And we find in the book of Acts that when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, three out of the five instances, it says they spake with other tongues. But now you see, that was not a ministry gift. That was the initial evidence of the infilling. It was the supernatural tongues, but it was not the ministry gift. So here in the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, he is talking about ministry gifts. So when he says in verse 30, do all speak with tongues? Well, he's talking about as a ministry gift to be given in public assembly. And certainly the answer to that question would be no. And do all interpret? No, all do not interpret. See, interpretation of tongues is one of the other ministry gifts. So all of these are ministry gifts and they're not to be confused with the unknown tongue or the evidence of the Holy Holy Spirit. All right. I want us to see some things about that because this will help you understand it when you get into it. Now, let's go on to the 13th chapter because he says in verse 31 there in the 12th chapter, but covet earnestly the best gifts, yet I show unto you more excellent way. Now, some people say, but now, Brother Caps, you see verse 8 in chapter 13 says that whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Well, now let's read verse 8. Charity never faileth, or love never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. Well, now ask yourself, has knowledge vanished away? No, knowledge has not vanished away. Then you realize that tongues have not ceased. And prophecies have not ceased. They're still going on today. So you see, if it were true that tongues had passed away and that it was not in effect today, then knowledge would have vanished away. Now, you see, when that which is perfect is come, it's talking about when Jesus comes, and when we have the glorified body, we won't have the need of the intellectual knowledge and it will vanish away. Now, let's go to chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity or love, I am become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. 
Now, Paul is showing you a more excellent way to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. There are nine ministry gifts of the Holy Spirit. They are available to the believers today that are filled with the Spirit of God. Now, here he tells you a more excellent way to minister by those gifts. Now, I've seen this happen. I have seen people filled with the Spirit of God. I have seen them operating in these ministry gifts. I have seen the Spirit of God reveal to them marvelous things, revelation knowledge, word of wisdom, word of knowledge discerning of spirits. But I have seen some of these people that did not operate the gift in love. In other words, they'd call someone out of the audience and reveal an open sin that they had committed right before the whole audience and say they were living in sin. Now, my friend, that is not operating in love. The Spirit of God would have us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. He's a gentleman. He will not embarrass people. It would be better to do that privately and not publicly. So, you see, he's telling you a better way to operate the ministry gifts. So, the Lord gives you a word of knowledge. Don't just blurt it out before everyone and reveal secrets of other people's lives and embarrass them. No. See, that's what he's talking about here. I'm showing you a more excellent way to operate in the gifts. He said, though I have the gift of prophecy, understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not love. I am nothing. In other words, all of this would be to no avail to that individual unless they operated in love. I'll tell you, this love law is the greatest thing on the earth. The word says here that love never faileth. Verse 8, you see, says charity or love never faileth. Thank God. The whole law is fulfilled in love. And do you know that faith worketh by love? Yeah, that's the way faith works. That's the reason some of you can't get your faith to work is because you're not operating in love. You have to operate the ministry gifts in love, and this is what Paul is saying. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. In other words, it would profit, sure, it would profit the individual that he gave it to, I mean, if you gave all your money to the poor, gave all your household goods to the poor, certainly it would profit them. But he said, unless I do it in love, it won't profit me. Now, you see, he's telling you a more excellent way to operate the gifts of the Spirit. So, you see, we are talking about ministry gifts, and we're not talking about just the evidence of tongues. So, when we're talking about this, we're talking about ministry gifts. Now, we're going down to verse 13 in chapter 13. Now abideth faith, hope, and charity, or love. These three, but the greatest of these is charity, or love. The greatest of these is love. All right, let's go into chapter 14 now. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. Now, this is what the gift of prophecy is for, is edification, exhortation, and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Now, notice, verse 4 is not talking about the ministry gift of tongues. It is talking about the evidence of the Holy Spirit. It is talking about the language of the Spirit, which is is predominantly a prayer language. Let's say it that way for lack of a better word to use. He is talking about speaking in tongues in your own prayer closet for your own edification. He that speaketh in a tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Now, Paul says in verse 5, I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. Now, see, he's still talking about not the ministry gift, but the evidence of the Holy Spirit or the language of the Spirit to be used predominantly in our prayer life, in your prayer closet. Not talking here of the ministry gift, but he said, I rather that you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret. Now, when he begins to say, except he interpret, he can be including here the ministry gift of tongues. 
It could be included there. I'm not so sure that's what he's talking about altogether, but it could be included there. But yet, you see, in our private prayer time, in your own private prayer closet, you can interpret some of the things you pray in the Spirit. You see, you can pray things in the Spirit, and sometimes the Lord will give you the interpretation of that. So you can interpret it in your own prayer life. I have done this, and I have realized that sometimes when you pray in the Spirit, it reveals things you're praying about, and it comes to you by interpretation in your own prayer closet. Now, I want to back up and look at that verse again. Actually, he's talking about both here. I said that he wasn't talking about the ministry gift, but as you look back up and read it again, let's read it again. I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. So we know that prophecy is a ministry gift. So then he's saying, I would that you all speak with tongues. But now I want you to notice that he said back in the 12th chapter, verse 30, do all speak with tongues as a ministry gift, in other words. Well, no, all do not speak with tongues. He said, I would that you all did, but all are not used in that manner. Now, this is where people get things fouled up and get out of order. They think, well, now, praise the Lord, if brother so-and-so can do that, then I can do it. Well, now, now, wait a minute. The Bible said that the Holy Spirit gives these, distributes them severally as he wills. Now, every person can speak with tongues, but not every person will be used in the ministry of divers kinds of tongues or uh, utterance in tongues in public assembly. Now, that's what he's talking about. So, no, not everyone would. He said, For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues except he interpret. Now, what he is saying there, it takes two gifts, the ministry gift of tongues and interpretation to be equal to prophecy, so that it might edify the church, you see, because prophecy edifieth the church. You see, back up to verse 3, He that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. And here he says, Greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret. In other words, if you had the gift of tongues in operation, the ministry gift, a utterance in tongues to be interpreted. Now, you see, there are tongues given to be interpreted. No man understandeth him, it, Paul says down here, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. Or one translation says it this way, divine secrets. Praise God. I'll tell you, you'll speak some secret things when you begin to pray in the Spirit or speak in tongues. Now, let me relate an incident that happened to me several years ago. I was praying concerning my daughter. She was in a certain place away from home, and I didn't know the situation there. I didn't understand the situation she was involved in, and I was praying in the Spirit one night, and the, the spirit of intercessory prayer came upon me, see, praying in the Spirit. Now, you see, Paul said, when you know not what to pray for as you ought, the Holy Spirit helpeth our infirmities or our weaknesses and maketh intercession for us in the perfect will of God. That's found in Romans chapter 8 verse 26 through 28. So you see, I was praying in the Spirit. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know the situation. I didn't know the circumstance. But I prayed in the Spirit, in tongues, in another language, you see, not knowing. My understanding was totally unfruitful. I did not know what I was saying. But the Word said the Holy Spirit was making intercession for me. Now, as I prayed that way for some 25, 30, 45 minutes, then the Spirit of God began to give me some interpretation of what I was praying about. And not only that, then he began to speak to me through a word of prophecy and said to me, said, then you have broken the strongholds of Satan this night. You have loosed the captive and you will within three days know what you were praying about and know what strongholds you pulled down by the praying in the Spirit. You see, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Some of you have not realized that. You see, some of you that have been against this speaking in tongues have just simply not understood what it means. See, it's a very vital experience to the day. So diversities of tongues is to be used. See, the ministry gift of tongues, now that's what we're talking about, the ministry gift to be used in public assembly. 
but you can pray in the Spirit. Everyone can pray in tongues in their own prayer closet. And Paul says that, I would that you all speak with tongues. All right, now let's go on with this. He says, My brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? In other words, he says, what good would it do you? Now, see, here's what you need to understand, that the church at Corinth had gotten out of line with the ministry gifts. They were abusing the gifts. They were not operating them the way the Word of God would have us to do it. And he goes on and talks about that there are many sounds in the earth, and none of them are without signification. But go on down with me. Let's start down there in verse 10. There are, as it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, but none of them without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh be a barbarian unto me. Even so ye, forasmuch as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. In other words, Paul says, you need to seek to excel in that which would edify the church. In other words, not just a lot of speaking in tongues, in public assembly with no interpretation, because it will not edify. They would not know what you said. It would build you up. It would build me up personally if I went in and did that other than being out of the direction of the Spirit of God, see? It would be all right. But you see, it would be wrong because it would disturb the church. It would not edify the church. And in fact, Paul went on in to say, well, let's go on and read it. Verse 13, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he interpret. In other words, if you have the ministry gift, he said pray that you interpret that. Because if you were to give an utterance in tongues in a public assembly, and there was no interpreter there, it would not edify the church. So he said, if you have this gift, pray that you may interpret. And not only that, you can pray that you interpret in your own prayer life. So all of us can do that, could enter into that, either by interpretation of our own prayer life or interpreting in public assembly. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, notice he said his understanding. In other words, his intellect was unfruitful. He didn't understand what he was saying. He says, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. In other words, you see, some people say, well, Paul said not to speak in tongues. No, see, Paul didn't say that. He, he says something similar to that over here, but he's talking about if I'm going to teach others, I wouldn't teach them in tongues because they couldn't understand it. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding also. Now, I'm convinced here he is talking about then I will pray with the Spirit, then I will interpret by the Spirit and pray not only in the Spirit with my understanding, and I'll know what I'm praying about. See, that can be involved there. That may not be all that he's talking about there. I'm sure that Paul is talking about also, I will pray in the Spirit, then in times I will pray with my understanding, not in the Spirit. I, I understand that. He said, I'll sing in the Spirit. Now, some of you didn't know that you can sing in the Spirit, in other tongues, in another language that you did not learn. See, it's supernatural. This is the supernatural manifestation of God's power within the believer. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe, in Mark chapter 16, verse 17, 18, in my name, he says, they'll speak with new tongues. Well, this is what Paul's talking about here. Now, he goes on to say, else when thou shall bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen to thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what he saith? For verily thou givest thanks well, but the others are not edified. Now see what Paul's saying? He said, if it's not given for edification, then he said, you shouldn't be doing it. Don't do it in public assembly. Don't pray over your food in tongues when there are several people around because they don't know what you've prayed. It wouldn't edify them. Now look at verse 18. Paul says, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I may teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. In other words, if you're teaching people, don't try to teach them in tongues. 
Now, that's simply what Paul's saying. No, he's not saying not to speak in tongues in church. He's talking about the ministry gift can be used in the church, the ministry gift of tongues, but not just to come into the church and begin to just speak when there is no interpreter or you didn't have the ministry gift of tongues. There is a difference. Let me say it again. There is a difference between the ministry gift and the simple speaking in tongues. What I'd like for us to do now is back up into the 14th chapter to verse 5, and let's say a little bit about the interpretation of tongues. Paul says, I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret, that the church may be edified. Now, here's what I want you to understand, that there is interpretation to tongues given as a ministry gift. There is also interpretation to your private prayer life in your own private closet of prayer. You should seek to edify yourself in this manner and have interpretation there. But in a public assembly where utterance in tongues are given by the Spirit of God decently and in order. I want to add that because I've seen a lot of it out of order. I've seen a lot of it that was just the flesh operating. I've seen a lot of it that was not real. But friends, I want you to know that this is a real ministry gift, and it bears us taking time to understand it. Now, some of you have just thrown it out and said, no, I've seen too much of that. It's not right. Well, what you saw might not have been right. And I'm convinced that if the denominational world could see this as it should be seen, they would be willing to accept it. Well, now look at what Paul says. He said, Greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret, that the church may receive edifying. In other words, interpretation of tongues. Now, that's one of the gifts. In other words, there is a ministry gift of interpretation of the ministry gift of tongues. All right? He said, When you do that, you will edify the church. It would edify the church. It'd build them up. It'd help them also. Now, Paul said in another place, you know, if there's no interpreter present, just let him speak unto himself and unto God. But here, he says, except he interpret. In other words, tongues and interpretation would be equivalent to prophecy. And he said that prophecy would edify. It was given for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Verse 3, let's read that. He that prophesies speaketh unto men. Not unto God. Now notice, if you speak in an unknown tongue, you speak unto God, not unto men. But when you prophesy, you are speaking to men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. In other words, you're exhorting men by the Spirit of God. By the anointing of God that comes upon you, you're exhorting men and bringing comfort, words of comfort, words of edification. Now, too often I have seen this where supposedly the gift was operating or someone was trying to operate the gift. Let me say it that way. Trying to operate a gift that they didn't have. And they were bringing forth words that was not edifying, words that were not comforting, but they were words of doom and destruction. Now, you see, this is not what the simple gift of prophecy is for. This does not mean that because you have the gift of prophecy that you are a prophet. That is a different gift altogether. That's a different ministry calling. But this simple gift of prophecy is speaking exhortation, edification, and comfort to the body of Christ. It might only be just a verse of Scripture that the Spirit of God caused to rise up within you. You speak it forth. It's to exhort and edify. But you see, sometimes people don't understand that, and they try to operate something they don't have. You see, the prophet's ministry is a different ministry. A prophet would have to have the other gifts operating, like the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. The simple gift of prophecy is not telling the future. It's just forth telling, just telling things that are inspired of the Spirit of God. It's not predicting at all. Well, here he says, tongues and interpretation, verse 5, is equivalent to prophecy. But he said, pray that you interpret. Now, interpretation of tongues comes this way by the Spirit of God. It'll just begin to be formed inside your spirit as the Spirit wills. Now, 
Paul said, desire earnestly the best gifts. I think we should desire the gifts in the body of Christ. You need begin now to begin to desire to operate in the ministry gifts of the Spirit. For they are available to you, but they are given to every man severally as the Spirit wills. You can't just operate it when you want to. And that's where a lot of people get in trouble, and that's where some of you have become turned off to the ministry gifts of the Spirit. Because you've seen people trying to operate something that they didn't have at all. But when you see it in operation by the Spirit of God, you'll know it's true and you'll know it's available to us today. All right, interpretation of tongues is simply what it says. It is interpretation. It is not translation. Now, sometimes people say, well, Brother Caps, I heard somebody give a utterance in tongues, and it was only a few words, and then there came a long interpretation. Somebody gave a long interpretation. They say, that couldn't be right. Well, it could be. It might not have been, but it could be right. Because, you see, it is interpretation of tongues. It is not translation. Now, if it was translation, it would be a different story. But, you see, the person that interprets uh, utterance in other tongues supernaturally by the Spirit of God, see, being a ministry gift, it would come supernaturally into their spirit. They might say it a different way. I've been in services where when I interpreted a message, there was a person present that understood the language that was spoken. In Kansas City several years ago, there was a lady gave an utterance in tongues. Well, I didn't understand it because I didn't know what she said. But by the Spirit of God, I got the interpretation of it. So I stood and gave the interpretation as the Spirit of God gave it to me. There was a lady there that spoke that language. In fact, I believe it was Spanish. And she said, you know, Brother Cap said, I understood the language that that lady was speaking in. Now, you see, that unknown tongue means unknown to the person that was speaking it. See, there was a person in this particular instance that knew the language which was being spoken. She said, now, when you interpreted that, she said, you didn't say it like I would have said it. In other words, she said, if I had translated it, I would have said it in different words. But she said, as I thought about it, she said, you know, said, I believe that you actually said it better than I would have knowing the language. You went in a roundabout way to say it. But she said, you really explained it better than I would have. Well, you see, that's what interpretation of tongues is. It is interpretation and not translation. So there could be a message or what we call an utterance in tongues that would be short and there'd be a long interpretation of that. Because I tell you, for instance, if you just ask three people, how's the weather? Well, someone might say, good. Someone else might say, well, I'll tell you, the weather has been fine for the last few days, but it looks like it's going to rain. Then you might have someone that go into a long, drawn-out discussion about the things that happened the last few days and talk about the weather. Well, you see, that'd be an interpretation of their answer to the question. So, you see, it would be interpretation and not translation when we're talking about interpretation of tongues. So, you see, there is a ministry gift of diverse kinds of tongues. There is the ministry gift of interpretation of tongues. And sometimes when people don't realize that, they get all confused. Sometimes there is a utterance given in tongues that is not to be interpreted, even in public assembly. I've seen it happen. People have what I would call a praise phrase. It's just the same words over and over, just a praise phrase. And they, they get inspired with the Spirit of God, and they just say that thing over and over. Well, it's not to be interpreted. Most of the time, it's not to be interpreted. And sometimes, see, people think that it is. And sometimes people get in the flesh and try to interpret that. Well, you see, that is not an utterance to be interpreted most of the time. We'll say it that way. See, most of the time. Now, maybe not always. Maybe the Lord would want it interpreted sometime. So it would edify the church that praise was going up. See, the Bible says that they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Well, they magnified God in the tongues, and evidently there was some interpretation there to know that they did magnify God. Well, you see, these ministry gifts are in operation in the church today. Now, I know some people say they're not, but the interpretation of tongues is available to us.
All right. He says, verse 22, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not to them that believe not, but to them that believe. Now, you see, we found out that tongues and interpretation is equivalent to prophecy. But you see, it takes two gifts to be in manifestation to get the same results as you would if you had only the one gift of prophecy. We'll start with verse 22 here and read on down and show you something that Paul said concerning prophecy. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. Now listen to it. Tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. In other words, people standing around hearing people speak supernaturally in other tongues, they would have to admit that it is supernatural and it's not natural to do that. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them that believe. Now listen to what Paul said. One is a sign to the unbeliever. Tongues is a sign to the unbeliever that it's being spoken supernatural. But prophecy is a sign to the believer. In other words, it's a sign that the believer is obeying the Spirit of God and bringing forth revelation to the church, to edification, exhortation, and comfort. All right, before we read verse 23, I want us to read again verse 3 in the 14th chapter. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. All right, we're talking about edifying the church. Now, verse 23, if therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, and there came in those that are unlearned are unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? Now listen to what Paul says. See, this will help you understand this. He said, if you come together, the whole church and everybody speaks with tongues. They're just in there praying in tongues, worshiping God in tongues in public assembly. And there come in those that are unlearned, those that are unbelievers, those that don't understand what's going on. He said, they'll say you're mad. But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, and he is judged of all. In other words, if they're all prophesying, they would be giving exhortation, edification, and comfort. In other words, it would be in a language that you could understand. You can see what Paul's saying. He said it'd be better to have more prophecy and less speaking in tongues unless there was an interpreter present. Because he said, the people will think you're mad. Now, some of you, that's the reason you've been turned off to the whole thing of the supernatural tongues is the fact that you've been in a place where they did it that way. And there was not order. Well, Paul is saying this. Now, don't misunderstand me. There is a time to pray in the Spirit. There is a time to pray with your own understanding. You can sing in the Spirit. You can sing in other tongues. And I believe you can do that in public assembly when people are worshiping God. But when it comes to teaching, you would not try to teach people in tongues. Now, he said, but if all prophesy, in other words, he's telling you if there is an excess of any one of the two, prophecy or tongues, he said, I'd rather it be prophecy. For he says, and thus as the secrets of his heart is manifest, so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Now, I've seen this happen. I've seen unbelievers come into church and the spirit of prophecy come upon someone, and they began to exhort and speak the words of the Spirit of God to edification, exhortation, and comfort, and began to comfort that individual. They were going through some kind of test or trial or some bad situation that was in their home, and the Spirit of God read that. The Spirit of God comforted that individual, gave that individual some exhortation, 
from the Word of God and how to heal that situation. And they went away edified and built up. And that person said, Dear Lord God, you know that's got to be from God because nobody knew that but me. Hadn't told anyone, see. So this is what Paul's saying. If a man operating the simple gift of prophecy, he'll tap into some things that'll read your mail. It'll read some things about you or an individual that'll cause them to know that that is of God. Now look at verse 26. How is it then, brethren? In other words, Paul is saying, how is it in your church here at Corinth? Then he answers that. When you come together, every one of you has a psalm. Every one of you hath a doctrine. In other words, and every one hath a tongue and hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. He said, let all things be done to edifying. In other words, in the church at Corinth. Here's what the problem was. When they came together, everybody had a psalm. Everyone wanted to preach a doctrine. Everyone wanted to speak in tongues. Everyone had a revelation. Everyone had interpretation. In other words, he said, let all things be done to edifying. Don't do all things. <laughs> he said, let it be done to edifying. In other words, everyone shouldn't be involved in the whole thing. Now, it seems to say that different, but let's go on and read. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, at the most three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, let him speak unto himself and to God. Now, Paul is giving this as a guideline. He didn't say, don't speak in tongues in church. He said, if there be no interpreter, don't let the gift of tongues be given forth in the public assembly. If there is no interpreter present, it would be foolish to just keep standing up and giving an utterance in tongues. That would not be considered order. It would be considered out of order. And in so many places today, it is that way. But he said, don't let it be that way. Let him speak unto himself and to God. In other words, it's all right for that man to pray in tongues. It's all right for that individual to edify himself. And he goes on and said, let the prophets speak two or three, but let others judge. If anything be revealed to another setteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and that all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Now, here's the thing I want to bear hard on. The spirit of the prophet, in other words, not talking about a prophet's ministry. He's talking about the simple gift of prophecy. And he says that their spirit is subject to the one that's prophesying. Now, someone said, well, I just couldn't hold that. I just had to jump up and interrupt the minister while he was preaching or giving an altar call and give that prophecy. No, you didn't have to. The word says that the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Someone said, I just had to give that utterance in tongues right during the altar call. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. That was out of order. Most likely it was out of order because you are able to control that. It's up to you. Paul said, I will pray in the spirit. I will pray with my understanding. You have to will to do that, and you need to realize that many people are misusing that, and they're getting out of order with it. Now, that's the reason I want to touch hard on this. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophets. The Holy Ghost is not going to make you do anything. It has to be by the anointing of the Spirit of God. Now, look at verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let the women keep silent in the church. For it is not permitted to them to speak, for they are commanded to be under obedience, also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now listen to this. He is not saying that women shouldn't talk in church. You have to realize that in that day, it was a peculiar situation. The women were unlearned. They were segregated. They were set on one side of the church. The men sat on the other. And while they were preaching, why, you know, John's wife might holler out and say, Hey, John, is that true what he's saying? And John would have to holler back across there and say, Oh, shut up now. I'll tell you when I get home. Well, how would you like to try to preach with all of that going on? Well, it would be a problem, wouldn't it? Well, you realize then that this is what he's talking about. He's saying, let them ask their husbands when they get home. Don't disturb the church. And that's simply what he's saying. 
Now look at verse 39. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, forbid not to speak with tongues, let all things be done decently and in order. Now sometimes people want to just kick it all out because it's not done in order and decently. He said, let all things be done. But while you're doing it, do it decently and in order. Yes, he said, covet to prophesy, forbid not to speak with tongues. Well, thank God. Tongues is for us today, the ministry gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues and the gift of prophecy are the three vocal gifts. They're ministry gifts. They are for you today. They are available to you. And thank God we ought to covet earnestly these gifts. Let all things be done, but let it be done decently and in order.